In this video, we are going to be looking at the Cisco IOS. We are also going to look at how to connect to a Cisco device using software and cables. And we are going to look at the IOS modes. So let's get started. What is the Cisco IOS? The Cisco IOS stands for the Cisco Internetwork Operating System. And it is the operating system that runs on your router. So the way you have the Windows system and the OSX system for Mac, and the Linux operating system, that's the way the Cisco IOS works. And Cisco IOS is a command line based IOS. This means by default, it's not a graphic user interface, but a command line tool. The way you configure a Cisco device is by actually entering commands on the command line. The other thing you need to know about the Cisco IOS is that the Cisco IOS is constantly being revised by Cisco, but it's still the same concept the same way you would configure it. So we've had many versions of the iOS. We've had previous versions. Now you have version 15. You had versions 12, 11, 10, 9. There was a jump from 12 to 15. We are not very sure why Cisco made that jump and didn't have versions 13 and 14. The most common version of the iOS and routers is the version 15. And the most recent version in switches is the version 12. Typically, it's the same kind of iOS that runs on all Cisco devices, but a few exceptions. For instance, we have for firewalls. In firewalls, the iOS mode is a little different from what you have in switches and in routers. Also, when you have things like IPS devices, the operating system for IPS devices is also different from what you have in switches and routers. But typically on most routers, you have the same iOS. There's also something that is known as the iOS XR. It's a little different from the main iOS in the sense that the syntax is different and it's for high-end Cisco devices, like devices that are used in service provider environments. But for the scope of this series, we will only be focusing on the mainstream iOS. You also need to know that there are a couple of GUI options that you have for configuring a Cisco device. I would not advise that you go with the GUI options above. The GUI options include the CCP, the Cisco Configuration Professional, that you can use to configure routers. You also have what is called the ASDM, which is used to configure firewalls. You also have what is called the IDM, which is used to configure IPS. This is used to configure ASA firewalls, and the full meaning is the Advanced Security Device Manager, and the IDM means the IPS Device Manager. So you have these GUIs. If you are going to configure an IPS, yes, you can go with the GUI. If you're going to configure ASA, I would say no, use the CLI, and if you're going to configure a router or a switch, definitely use the CLI. I'm sure you're excited and really want to get onto configuring your Cisco routers for the first time, and I wouldn't stop you from doing that. But before we can go on to configuring, let's just look at how we could connect to the Cisco devices. To configure a Cisco device, you can connect directly to the device or configure it remotely. If you want to configure it directly, then you have to have a special kind of cable, and these cables come with all Cisco devices. So this is the cable that you have here. It's called a console cable. And the console cable is pretty much a rollover cable, and you have a DB9 serial port at the other end. Why it's called a rollover cable is that the cables that are here are rolled over across. So if you have cables 1 to 8 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, if this port was at the other end, all you have is that cable 1 would come to cable 8, cable 2 would come to 7, 3 would come to 6, 4 would come to 5, 8 to 6, and that's why they're called rollover cables. And the other end of the port is a serial port, a DB9 port that has a serial pin with nine ports. Now, most computers nowadays do not have that port. So if you're going to be configuring a device, you might need this cable, which is just a converter from the DB9 port to the USB port. So what happens is that you connect this cable to this point, and then you can connect this end to the console port of the router and connect the USB port to your computer. 
Now the console port of the router is always clearly marked console and is usually at the back of the router or the switch. And once you connect that, then you should be able to configure the devices physically. Okay, so you have connected the cables to your router and you've connected it into your system and what next do you do? You need a software to be able to configure the routers or the switches and there are many kinds of software that you can use. The first one is HyperTerminal. HyperTerminal used to be really popular because it used to come preloaded on Windows machines up until Windows XP. But from Windows Vista, Windows 7, and Windows 8, we no longer have HyperTerminal coming directly with Windows, but you can download a private version of HyperTerminal from the internet. Another software you can use is what's called Putty. And it's a small free software that you can download from the internet. And the good thing about Putty is that you don't have to install it. Once you download it, you can just run it. So you just download an executable file and just run the software, then you can configure the devices. Another software that is very popular is TerraTerm. It's also a free software that you can download off the internet and use to configure your devices. And then another one is Secure CRT. And this is one of the most widely used softwares, but the problem with this is that it's not free. That's not really a problem considering the features that you can get from it. It's about $100, but you can get a lot of features. You can use it to run scripts and things like that. Basically, there's really no preference for the software. Personally, I use PuTTY and TerraTerm a lot. I do not use Secure CRT or HyperTerminal, but I have used all four softwares, and I think that you can use any one that you really prefer. It really doesn't matter which one you eventually decide to use. But if you really want to just download a fast software to use, I advise that you use PuTTY. I'm just going to show you the settings on PuTTY, and it's pretty much the same settings on all the other softwares. You should connect in directly to your Cisco device using PuTTY. The type of connection that you want to choose is called serial connection, and then you have to choose the serial line you're connecting to. Usually, if you have a serial port in your system, it would be COM1 but it's possible for it to not be COM1 if you're using a USB to serial converter. So you just need to go to your computer to check what COM port it is. And you can do that by going to device manager. By default, Cisco recommends that you set the speed, which is also called the baud rate to 9600, the data bit to eight, the stop bit to one, parity to none, and flow control to none. But you can also leave uh, the settings and they will still work. The default settings on PuTTY always work all the time. But Cisco recommendations is that this should be none. And then based on these settings, you can connect directly to the console port of the Cisco device. Now, another kind of connection uh, would be if you do not want to connect directly, like if you're trying to configure the device remotely, and you can do that through a Telnet access, or you can do that through what is known as SSH access. Now, Telnet comes with every new Windows system for most new Windows systems. Telnet is not enabled by default, so you need to enable Telnet by default. But if you already have downloaded any of these software, it doesn't matter if Telnet is not enabled because you can Telnet using any of the software. Also, SSH means secure shell. It's just a more secure method to connect to devices remotely because if you use a Telnet connection, all the configurations that you make, they're all sent in clear text. And so if you do anything like configure the passwords of the systems, if you have any security flaw, for instance, if somebody else has installed a sniffer like Wireshark on the system, you can actually see the password that was sent by following the TCP stream in Wireshark. But if you use SSH, all the messages will be encrypted and that makes it more secure. Another way you can configure the devices remotely is using HTTP and HTTPS, which is just used to configure it through your web interface. And that's why you have the GUIs like the CCP and the ASDMs and the IDMs and things like that. Now, let's move on to the iOS modes. The Cisco iOS is filled with various device configuration modes, and you will find yourself needing to understand 
what mode you're in in order to understand what commands that you can apply in that mode. But let's just get started with the basic modes in the Cisco iOS. The first one is what is called user exec mode. And the user exec mode is the first mode you get into when you log into your router for the first time. And it's just like guest mode in the sense that you do not have most privileges. You can only check what's going on on the router, like just a few show commands to see what's going on. You don't really have access to configure anything. You don't really have access to even be able to see very intricate details on the router. So the next mode is actually what is called the privilege mode. And that's where you have access to most of the things you can do. And usually you need a password to get from the user exec mode to the privilege mode. But even right in the privilege mode, you can see a lot of things. You cannot decide if you want to configure, but you can configure once you go into what is called the configuration mode. And the configuration mode is where you now apply configurations that will affect the router. You can always go out of this mode to the mode above you, so you can go from the configuration mode back to the privilege mode. And you can go from the privilege mode back to the user exec mode. So in this video, we have been able to look at the Cisco iOS. We've also been able to look at how to use cables and software to connect to your router and start configuration. And we started looking at the modes on the Cisco router. In the next video, we are going to get right to configuring a Cisco router, looking at what the modes look like on the command line and how to set basic properties of a Cisco router. Thank you very much for watching.